Libby and welcome to the second episode on microscopy in GCSE biology. So I'm going to be talking about developments in microscopy today. Developments in microscopy, the use of the microscope, have allowed us to see smaller details inside cells. This has improved our understanding of cell functions. So a light microscope passes light through a specimen and creates a magnified image using lenses. The first light microscope was made using two lenses in the late 16th century. It had a resolution better than the human eye itself. Discoveries using light microscopes. So light microscopes allowed bacteria to be seen for the first time. They also allowed us to see plant cells and animal cells as separate objects. However, we still could not tell lots of subcellular or within the cell structures apart. The electron microscope was first used in 1933. Electron microscopes work in a similar way to light microscopes. However, electrons are passed throughout, through the specimen instead of light. They can now resolve distances of one nanometer, which is a much better resolution than light microscopes, and with magnifications of 500,000. The high level of detail of electron, electron microscopes allowed scientists to see cellular structures more clearly. They also allowed scientists to study how structures such as mitochondria, chloroplasts, and ribosomes function. So which microscope enabled us to understand the functions of subcellular structures best? This would be electron microscopes due to their better magnification and resolution. So the subcellular structures which were found in plant cells but not animal cells include a chloroplast, permanent vacuole, and a cell wall. So if we're gonna break down the information on the microscopes, we've got a light microscope and an electron microscope. The light microscope was first used in the 16th century, whereas the electron microscope was first used in 1933, so the 20th century. The light microscope had a resolution better than the human eye, whereas the electron microscope had resolution of one nanometer and achieved times 500,000 magnification. The light microscope allowed scientists to see bacteria for the first time, and the electron microscope allowed scientists to scientists to see subcellular structures more clearly, such as chloroplasts and mitochondria. So if you were to use a light microscope in an experiment, you would put a thin sample of tissue, for example, the epidermis or the skin of an onion, onto a microscope slide. Then add a few drops of a suitable stain slash dye, for example, iodine. Then place a cover slip on top of the tissue and place the slide onto the microscope stage. Use the objective lens with the lowest magnification and focus on the sample. Increase the magnification and then refocus to see different features of the cell. So to un recap on our understanding of microscopes, we can observe structures within cells using microscopes. So for example, here we can see the cell process mitosis. And here you can see subcellular structures such as mitochondria or vacuoles. So when using a microscope, you first use the lowest power objective lens. So this means a lower magnification before increasing the power and then refocusing. So what was the maximum resolution and magnification that an electron microscope could achieve? So it's resolution of one nanometer and a magnification of times 500,000. So as I discussed, when using a light microscope, a stain is used to give contrast to the features of the cell to make them visible. And to recap on light microscopes, so first of all, light is passed through the specimen not electrons. It does not allow you to see small subcellular structures and it has a higher resolution than the human eye. Also, it allows cells to be viewed as separate objects. So if we're gonna recap on the stages of an experiment using the light microscope, first of all, you might cut a thin sample of tissue such as an onion epidermis and place it onto a microscope slide. Then add 
a few drops of sustainable stain and then place a cover slip on top of the tissue and place the slider onto the microscope stage. Or perhaps that actually might go before the cover slip and then the suitable stain. And then you use the lowest power objective lens and focus on the sample. Once you focus, you can increase the power. So let's submit. Oh, so I was right the first time. So first of all, you add the few drops of sustainable suitable stain iodine, and then you place a cover slip on top of the tissue, which we can scroll up and recap here on the experiment details. So when using a light microscope, a stain is used to give contrast to the features of the cells to make them visible. And to recap on the stages, as I had it wrong the first time, first of all, we want to cut a thin sample of tissue, such as the onion epidermis. Then we want to add a few drops of suitable stain to create the contrast. Then we place the cover slip on top of the tissue, and then we use the lowest power objective lens and focus on the sample. So that's all for the second episode on microscopy. Thank you for listening.